Hey YouTubers, this is Scott. I'm working with a Sparkle uh, seltzer maker machine I've, I bought used, uh, probably was on eBay some time ago. Um, was working fine, was using my own uh, baking soda and citric acid that I bought on Amazon as mixes instead of the packets. Everything was working great. Um, but it seems that uh, over time, the uh, chemicals we use get in there and crystallize uh, down in the works and uh, in particular maybe a uh, micro switch that um, needed to make proper contact and so I would just get varied results with uh, you know putting down the uh, arm that captures the bottle of water and uh, pushing the buttons to try to get it to run and uh, Anyway, it got to the point where I was getting some flaky results. I'd have to hold the arm down or press the top lid down to try to make the button engage, and sometimes it would work, and if I let go, it would stop, and I'd have to start over again. Now it got so bad that um, I could not even get it to run with all those finagling, so I thought it's time to take it apart and see if I can figure out um, what's wrong. So let me show you what I have here. Assuming that'll let me switch around. I guess I have to put it together as a separate video. So I actually took it all apart. Um, here's the button panel that um, had this ribbon cable that I cut off of it. Here's the control board. I couldn't really tell anything was wrong there. I was uh, checking the voltages with a typical Harbor Freight meter and I was able to read the 120 going in. Um, I thought this was an isolation transformer but it seemed like it stepped it up before it went into the bridge rectifier to like, I don't know, like 130, 160 volts AC and then it got turned to DC. Maybe this is an isolation transformer. I thought it would have been a step down to 12 volts because the um, pump is 12 volts. So anyway, um, I was checking voltages. Uh, I was definitely getting five volts for the circuitry because you know the LEDs were coming on. There's an LED that comes lights up the canister for fun, and that is actually, I think it's this piece. You know, this is the micro switch. Where what I do with it? Put my glasses on. See what I got here. Um, I, oh, it's still in there. Yeah, there's a LED in there. So. This was primarily working, but it wasn't feeding. This is the ribbon cable for the buttons, and it would just do a sequence and blink and, and chime three times, and I just couldn't figure it out. So rather than tossing, I thought, you know what? When I take all the Tupperware off, all the siding and everything, it seems to come down to uh, th this circuit board was behind this black case here, trying to keep it dry, I'm sure, from water that can get in and by the way I took this pipe off and cleaned it out because it was getting moldy um, but this is the pump down here and um, it actually here's the two wires going directly to the pump and I hooked a just a regular 12 volt uh, 1 amp capacity power pack to it just to confirm it would run it and it does on the pump itself, if you take it apart, you can actually read it's 12 volts and like 0.65 amps. So um, that's all you really need to run as far as I know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together and uh, make a nice connection to this with the switch so that I can just turn it on and off. But the thing is I would have to monitor it so that uh, rather than letting the board and the lights time it so that you get a certain level of seltzer, I'll just set a timer for you know a couple of minutes and uh, then I'll turn the switch off and I'll take out the, the water but of course here's where you fill the uh, chemicals in and then the water reservoir is back here and uh, I think that'll all work as as it should just with 12 volts so this is kind of all in a way optional but it sure make it made it nice to make it automated for you so you could pick the level of seltzer although I always pick, pick the max and have it auto shut off and it chimed at you when it was done and if you didn't lift up the arm and take it out it would still chime at you to remind you so it was a neat design but there was some failure point that I couldn't figure out or maybe it was a 
permanent problem here that maybe an engineer could figure out, but I could not. So yeah, that took out the AC wiring. Like I said, I'm just gonna have a switchable 12 volt power supply on there. So I'll put it all together and see how it works. I didn't show you any of the things taking it out. There's just a bunch of very similar, you know, like all the same screws. There's a few components down here that are a little different screws. So just keep track of things, maybe take pictures so that you know how to put the plastic back on. But uh, yeah, it looks like a cyborg all pulled apart here, but I'll put it back together. We'll give it a try and let you know how it works. So here I have the unit back together and put some water in the back. Should be more up to there, but I'm only using that amount. Have this filled with water up to the line. I put in citric acid and baking soda in the correct amounts, which is one of these, which is what a table. It's pretty much like a small coffee measurer. And uh, close the lid. Push that down, and then I have this 12 volt pack to just plug in. Whoops. And I just leave that in for Probably about two minutes going like that. Unplug the power pack and it tastes just fine. So hopefully that will help you out if you need to repair one of these. Simply hook up the pump to a 12 volt pack that's got the correct current rating and you're back in business. Hope you enjoyed this, hope it helps.